Now at five, the UK boosts its terror threat from severe to critical fear that another attack is imminent after the concert bloodshed in Manchester, England. This evening, we have the stories of the young victims. And some new details about the suicide bomber. The British newspaper, The Sun, publishing this photo of the suspected terrorist. He's been identified as 23-year-old Salman Abedi. He was born in Britain. His parents immigrated to the UK from Libya. We start our coverage with reporter Tina Krause, who is live in Manchester for us tonight. Tina. Ken and Liz, good evening. It's still unclear how this suicide bomber was able to go undetected entering this area. Some witnesses saying that security was lax at last night's concert, that security screening is not what it should have been. And people who were there say when this bomb went off, it sent shrapnel and metal nuts and bolts flying across the scene. Hundreds gathered outside Manchester City Hall to honor the young victims of Monday night's attack. Love in the end is always stronger than hate. The bomb exploded shortly after Ariana Grande had left the stage and set off a wave of panic as concertgoers tried to rush out. Everybody's pushing, everybody's shoving, the shoes were being lost, phones being dropped. And there was just smoke and like embers falling down from the, from the roof. The explosion killed 22 people, including 12 children under the age of 16. 18-year-old Georgina Callender had met Ariana Grande two years ago. Eight-year-old Safi Russos is the youngest known victim. Authorities say the suicide bomber attacked as crowds left the stadium. They say 23-year-old Salman Abidi arrived at the venue by train and detonated his explosives near one of the main entrances. Our priority, along with the police counter-terrorist network, is to continue to establish whether he was acting alone or working as part of a wider network. Manchester police raided the suicide bomber's home, blowing down his front door before entering. They also arrested an unidentified man in his 20s. British Prime Minister Theresa May raised the UK's terror threat level. But the threat level should be increased for the time being from severe to critical. A further attack may be imminent. May said the investigation suggests there may be a wider group involved. More than a dozen people are still reportedly missing more than 24 hours after this deadly terror attack. Ken? Yeah, Tina, um, we understand it's still up in the air as to whether he was part of a bigger group, but do we know if the bombing suspect was at the scene by himself? Or might there have been other people there? That's exactly what investigators are trying to figure out. This was a local man. He attended a mosque here in Manchester, but a moderate mosque, not a radical mosque. So how did he become radicalized? Are there other people behind this? Was he a lone wolf or was this indeed part of a larger terror plot? These are things police still trying to get to the bottom of tonight. Ken? All right, Tita, thanks very much. Now we're learning more about the victims killed in the attack. Veronica de la Cruz joins us now with more about the young lives that were lost. Liz Ken, so far officials have identified two of the 22 victims killed. One was an 18-year-old college student who was a huge fan of Ariana Grande. The other, just eight years old. People who saw Safi Russos at the concert Monday night say the eight-year-old was wearing an Ariana Grande t-shirt when she died. Russo's mother and sister are among the wounded. 18-year-old Georgina Callender was also killed when the bomb went off. The college student was said to be a super fan of the singer and even took some photos with her a few years ago. In Manchester and across the UK, there is anger and disbelief that a terrorist took aim at the community's youngest and most vulnerable. These were children, young people and their families, but those responsible chose to terrorize and kill. A number of people are also missing, including Charlotte Campbell's 15-year-old daughter, Olivia. I'm heartbroken at the moment because I don't know where she is. I don't know if she's alive even yet. In London, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip stood for a moment of silence. The Queen released a statement saying, quote, The whole nation has been shocked by the death and injury. Meanwhile, the city of lights briefly went dark. The lights on the Eiffel Tower were turned off at midnight to honor the victims. Paris was the site of a terror attack on French police last month along the famed Champs-Élysées. And in 2015, terrorists planned 
targeted attacks across the city that left 130 people dead. Grande arrived back in Miami a short time ago after suspending the rest of her world tour. Liz? Veronica, thank you.